Louisville Cardinal fans marching their way into the FedEx Forum as their top seed cards get ready to tip off the semifinal round at the Conference USA Men's Basketball Tournament. Francisco Garcia and the cards are ready for a track meet with UAB. Kelly Tires brings you the best in Conference USA basketball. Today it's the semifinal round of the Conference USA Men's Basketball Tournament. This championship week is presented by 7-Up. It continues from the FedEx Forum in Memphis with the number one seed in Louisville. Cardinals take on fourth seed UAB. Cardinals got here by virtue of their big win over TCU. 85-61 yesterday. UAB took the fall in a thriller. 59-56. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Luke Canellis, Brand for Schiller alongside. When you get to the semifinal round, it's all about pressure. And these two teams love pressure. Well, Lou, this is going to be fun. UA Bree brings it. 40 minutes, relentless pressure. They wore down DePaul at the end of the game yesterday. And Louisville, Rick Patino, they can throw some pressure at you as well. Tempo of this game is going to be fun to see how it develops. UAB got here thanks to a three-pointer from Demario Eddins at the end of the game over DePaul. Eddins got the shot thanks to a terrific pass from Donnell Taylor. Well, Donnell Taylor, he's the healthy twin, versatile, all over the statistical categories, Conference USA. And Larry O'Bannon has been red hot down the stretch for Rick Pitino's Cardinals. O'Bannon had a monster second half yesterday against TCU. Starting lineups for this ball game for the UAB Blazers. Squeaky Johnson, Donnell Taylor, McDonald, Lewis, and Eddins on the other side. It's Dean O'Bannon, Garcia, Miles, and Palacios moves into the starting line. Well, Rick Pitino opting to go small. Otis George out of the lineup. The freshman from Columbia, Palacios, will match up with Eddins. They're both small forwards playing inside. Palacios had a nice game. Yesterday grabbed 12 rebounds against the Horned Frogs. Head coach Rick Pitino, our Kelly Tires Conference USA Tournament storyline. The surprise so far, 11th seed, South Florida. They knocked off Cincinnati last night, number seven Memphis, playing on its home court. They've won two in a row to reach the semis. They'll play later. Ellis Miles, triple-double yesterday. That's the first in Conference USA Tournament history. Ellis Miles' triple-double was the second in the history of the University of Louisville. A lot of great players. Samaki so Walker had the other. UAB controls the tip at the other end. Edens with a quick two. Well, that will not make Rick Patino happy, but it's an indication of the tempo UAB wants to play this game at. Here's that pressure you talked about, Coach. Well, it starts out man-to-man, -man and they will run and trap at every opportunity that it's advantageous to the Blazers. See up top. Over to O'Bannon. Squeaky Johnson all over O'Bannon. Louisville clock under 10. And very deliberate without a pure point guard. Garcia working on Lewis. Fades away. Won't fall. Lewis tracks it down. Back the other way come the Blazers. Nice job of defense from UAB. Taylor to Eddins. Eddins makes his way. Throws one up with the right hand. No. Loose McDonald comes out with it for a team that is aggressive on a defensive end. It's a patient offensive team Nice no look pass from squeaky Johnson Lewis couldn't convert O'Bannon two feet behind the line hits Well, Larry O'Bannon has been red hot down the stretch 43% from the field from the three-point line on the season 67% over the last six games yep. coach Palacios falls. He's called for traveling. Well, Larry O'Bannon coming off some huge performances down the stretch of the season. Off the fast break. Spots up on the line. That's something, Lou, that Louisville does every day in practice. Work on shooting those threes off the break. Yesterday against TCU, they missed their first 10 threes in that ball game. You know what Rick Pitino told them in the huddle a number of times? Keep shooting it. Taylor. Throws one up with the left hand. No. Miles there for the rebound. He had 10 yesterday. 3-2. Louisville in front thanks to the O'Bannon three. Miles at the free throw line is fouled by Lewis. Marcus Lewis, the senior out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
UAB led by head coach Mike Anderson, third season with the Blazers. What a job he's done, 64 and 32 so far. Three straight 20 win seasons to start that career. And a Sweet 16 appearance a year ago. Won the Conference USA, Ray Meyer, Coach of the Year Award last season. This year it was won by the other guy. We'll talk about him coming up. Well, Miles was so huge yesterday against that TCU pressure for a guy who's a power player. Rick Patino really allows him to handle the ball in the open court. And you saw the 10 assists. And that will probably come into play today against the UAB pressure. To have a big guy that handles it like Miles is an advantage. Yeah, he does such a good job of finding the open man once the double team comes. Here's that 2-3 zone. Louisville will play a lot of zone. They're long. Their slides are good. That's their leading scorer, Donnell Taylor, who knocks down the triple. He averages just under 16 a game. Had a rough one yesterday against the Blue Demons. Dean fades away. No. Marvette McDonald out. And on the run. He's fouled by Garcia. What's interesting about UAB Luz, is because they press in the full court, people think that they play wild on offense. Nothing of the sort. Very disciplined. Good shot there by Taylor in the flow of the offense. Real good shooting team as well. They were second in the league. First, the Louisville yep. Cardinals. Well, when they shoot the ball well, they're able to set up their full court pressure. You got the sense that both teams now, Rick Hartzell sorting a little bit of going back and forth out early in the game. Referees want to make sure in an aggressive game like this, they control their part early. Blazers 21 and 9. That's Eddins down low. Had it rejected by Palacios. Taylor had it rejected. And Eddins lets it go off him out of bounds. Great defense from Louisville. And that's something that's overlooked. Had a chance to chat with. Louisville Sports Information Director Kenny Klein, and he said, you know what, give us some credit for the defense we play. Well, 37% is number three in the country. The field goal defense, it's been that way. You know, Rick Pitino was much more of a pressing coach at Providence and Kentucky. Palacios working on Edmonds. Throws up the short eight-footer, in and out, and back the other way. Here come the Blazers. They lead by two. Lewis fouled on the floor. Second foul on Francisco Garcia. Last time these two teams met back on February 5th. And it was a thriller in Birmingham. Largest crowd of the year at UAB. Yep. Blazers lost. They gave the Cardinals everything they could handle. That's right. I think that was 73 all in the final minute. Eddins converts. Well, you get example right there. The full court pressure, the double team. Rick Pitino seen enough. He's going to talk about it. And immediately he wants to go to his bench. Otis George will check in. Well, keep, a, keep an eye on this. Now, very few teams in America press off of a miss. You see the run and jump double team and the steal by Eddins. We say run and jump because it looks like it's going to be man to man. Eddins comes out of nowhere, puts the trap on him, pokes it loose, gets the easy two. They average about 12 and a half steals a game, Fran, and they led the nation in steals the last two years. If they do it again this season, that'll be the first time that's happened in NCAA history. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues Friday night here on ESPN. Both semifinal games from the Big East Championship. First at 7 o'clock Eastern, West Virginia takes on number 21 Villanova. Then at 9 o'clock Eastern, it's 18th ranked Syracuse against number 14 UConn. The Big East Championship presented by Era Postal is also available in high defini definition on ESPN HD. Call your Lakeville cable operator, Direct TV, or the Dish Network today. Looking like all four of those teams in the Big East semifinals are in the tournament. Another steal for the Blazers. Donnell Taylor to his brother Ronnell, who's on the floor. He played just two minutes. They've been out of the lineup for seven games with a bad foot, broken foot to be exact. Donnell's jumper wouldn't fall. 
Right, he broke that foot in the Louisville game in Birmingham. Surprised he came back so quickly, Coach? Well, you know what? I, 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 not really, because uh, six weeks, it's about right. Maybe five. Palacios hits the three. I know his brother, Donnell, was really lonely. It's the longest they'd ever played, been apart from each other in terms of being on the court together. Played in high school in Montgomery, played in junior college at Okaloosa Walton, came here. Well, Palacios really gives you a different dimension for a power player. The freshman from Columbia can shoot the ball as well. He's sort of like a Jamal Mashburn type, even has the body type. And probably a little less baby fat than Jamal brought to Kentucky as a freshman. He's 6'8", but shoots 35% from three-point range. Squeaky Johnson's jumper wouldn't fall. Back to Palacios, who walks with it. Four turnover for Louisville. And we have a timeout on the floor. UAB with a 7-6 lead. Over Louisville. Played on one of the charge. Didn't get it. And DePaul will now sweat the next 48 hours as they are, I guess, firmly on the bubble. I don't know if you can firmly be on a bubble, but one, yeah, of, little one of about 25 teams in the country on the bubble right now. You're right. Unbelievable. A little in the paint. Wouldn't fall. Knocked out of bounds by Louisville. It will stay at that end of the floor. Well, Looks like there's three at least right now from Conference USA and certainly UAB and DePaul fighting for their NCAA lives. And the interesting thing is UAB has knocked off DePaul twice in the last eight days. How much will that hurt when this election yeah, committee It, it will be a factor if it comes down to those two teams for one of the last spots. It really will. If DePaul has done enough to get in on its own merits, they will. Taylor is fouled by Otis George. That's his first. Team's third. Louisville with four turnovers already. UAB yet to commit a turnover. Squeaky Johnson for three. Misses. Ron L. Taylor there for the offensive rebound. He misses, and Garcia pulls it out. Well, this is not a big team, UAB. And you can see they're having trouble early on scoring inside against the big bodies, Palacios and George. Harassed by Taylor. Pulls up for three. No. And his brother tracks down the miss. Eddins, who had two crucial threes against the Blue Demons in the last 127 of that game yesterday on the floor, along with Donnell Taylor, Ernest Little, Ronald Taylor, and Squeaky Johnson. Hooked away there by Dean. Shot clock at 16. And Squeaky Johnson last year, the best assist turnover ratio in the country, almost four to one. Turns it over there, yeah. but kicked out of bounds by Albano. He's going to need four Louisville. assists now to make up for that one turnover. <laughs> well, he averages five a game. <laughs> Friday, ESPNT's coverage of championship week continues with two more ACC tournament quarterfinal games. First at 7 Eastern, North Carolina State faces Wake Forest without Chris Paul. Then at 9 o'clock Eastern, Virginia battles J.J. Redick and the Duke Blue Devils. The ACC tournament also available in high depth on ESPN2 HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network today. Foul is on Francisco Garcia. That's his third. That will hurt because Garcia is a multi-dimensional player, obviously, perfect for the Patino style. He's going to sit now, I would imagine, the remainder of these 14 minutes. Donnell Taylor at the line. A 79% free throw shooter misses the first. Here comes Paul Delaney. Larry O'Bannon for Francisco Garcia. Huge loss for the Cards. Well, and remember, without a point guard, Miles and Garcia do a lot of the ball handling, and that'll be crucial against this full-court pressure of UAB. Palacios was the guy who fought ball problems yesterday against TCU. Yep. Today, it's Garcia. And you'll see the man-to-man -man full. Wherever they think they can get a trap, they'll come at you. There's Palacios. And Dean for a moment. Now O'Bannon takes the three. Short. Palacios traps down the miss. 
Down low, George barrels his way around the horn. Dean for three. No. Palacios there. What work by the freshman. Well, he is a relentless rebounder. You've got an idea right there why he's compared to Jamal Mashburn a little bit. The three goes up. He knows, Palacios, that Dean is going to shoot the three. He goes right to the offensive glass and anticipates the miss. First fouls on Richard Jones. And Palacios to the line, which is just under 10 points a game. Been wearing the protective lenses since his left eye was scratched against Kentucky back in December. Ironically, got used to playing with the protective lenses, and the scoring numbers improved once he hit conference play. And if you're going to be that aggressive a player inside, it's probably not a bad idea. Tied at eight. A little surprise, Louisville hasn't come with their full court pressure yet. Delaney all the way to the bucket. Wow, the freshman. Interestingly, he did not play in the Louisville game in Birmingham. His first experience against the Cardinal full court pressure of Taekwon Dean. Rossios has it knocked away. Brandon Jenkins picks it up. O'Bannon decides to take the three and hits. His one, second. One of the things that happens, Lou, when you scramble around in the half court, you're going to leave someone open. So if you don't get the steal and Louisville makes the extra pass, that's going to leave the freedom to shoot that three. For O'Bannon, his 73rd triple of the year. Almost knocked away. Timeout for UAB. Mike Anderson calls the timeout. What didn't he like out there on the floor as we look at the UAB basket? Well, the friend. Larry O'Bannon. What I love about Larry O'Bannon is how much he improved from year to year and now become an elite Louisville player. Ellis Miles, another guy who's really Absolutely. flourished under the tutelage of Patino. Minus 30 pounds that he was carrying around before Patino got here. Jenkins and his treadmills. You're right. <laughs> Jenkins in the bucket has it rejected. And George is fouled on the floor. Now, of course, Louisville can shoot the three. We know about O'Bannon, Taekwon Dean. But you can't give them this much space. Palacios. For a big guy can knock it down. Part of the Rick Patino package. Remember, back in 87, Lou, when the rule came into effect, Rick Patino's Providence College team took advantage of the rule as much as anybody, as Billy Donovan and Pop Lewis, Delray Brooks, Marty Conlon, and the like, took Providence to the Final Four in New Orleans. Otis George averages six a game, five and a half rebounds. This is there. Wade tracks it down. Palacios finds O'Bannon. Posting up Squeaky Johnson. Tried to get it over to Lorenzo Wade for the open three and threw it away. Well, in the flow of that little motion offense that they run, it's kind of a continuity offense. They got O'Bannon posted inside. But O'Bannon's not really accustomed to being in there that often. Sometimes when you think you can take advantage of the small point guard, you get yourself in trouble a little bit. Go away from what you do well. Miles comes back. George takes a seat. And now Louisville in a 2-3 zone. They play a lot of zone because they're long on the back line, so their slides in the zone are shorter. And they play it very aggressively, so you'll see a lot of contesting of shots. The forwards will bump out as much as they can to the wings. Jones throws up the floater off the glass. Richard Jones. Had a young man from Oklahoma City, a high school teammate of David Godbold of OU, the freshman who's starting for Kelvin Sampson. Good athlete. Palacios finds Miles. Knocked away by Delaney. Blazers on the run. Johnson all by himself at the free throw line and hits. Well, Squeaky Johnson thinks pass first. He really didn't want to shoot it, but he was left so open, he knocked it down. Little hole with another turnover. Here comes Delaney. Blazers on the run. Squeaky tried to get it to Bias, almost was tipped in. Well, you see the pace that UAB can cause. Way to the bucket, hits. Does this pace 
benefit one over the other? Well, I know both like to run. As much as they both like to run, the sloppy game, I think, helps UAB, especially because Louisville doesn't have a pure point guard. Richard Jones a little beyond his range. Jones, a guy, one of the top five recruits coming out of Oklahoma, just really hasn't blossomed like they had hoped. And the foul is on Squeaky Johnson. Timeout. Pace is picked up here at the FedEx Forum in Memphis, 14-13 UAB. Iowa State's been very, very effective down the stretch. Great guards, Stinson and Blaylock. Dean at the free throw line, no. The one thing UAB does to your offense is they speed you up and they get you playing at a pace that you're usually unaccustomed to playing. Lewis loses it. Jenkins back the other way. And Jenkins commits double dribble. We're at the FedEx Forum Conference USA Men's Basketball Tournament. UAB and sixth ranked Louisville. I'm Luke Cadellis. Fran Fraschill is alongside. Semi final round action. Lasers with four steals already. Cards with a couple. Louisville's also turned over the basketball seven times. Well, not surprising when you think that UAB turns teams over 21 times a game. Marcus Lewis will be on his range with short. UAV will keep it. Tobias he gets it to Richard Jones. Throws up the fadeaway and Jenkins pulls it away. I'm not sure that's a shot Mike Anderson wants. Jones more of a take it to the basket guy and not a fadeaway jump shooter. UAB is just six of 21 from the floor, but they've taken 11 more shots in the cards. That's why they lead by one. And remember, Louisville's an outstanding half-court defensive team, so the field goal percentage is not a surprise. Jenkins hits. Another one of those guys for Rick Pitino that keeps improving. Remember last year, Louis was a little bit shaky as a freshman, had to play a lot. Keeps getting better and better as numbers go up, his field goal percentage as well. Started five games. Like Tokwan Dean was out with Mono. Yep. So much skill development in this program. If you got the work ethic, you will get better. Jones again for three. He's missed two in a row now. Heads up play by Miles. Grabbed it. Come on. The Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your local operator, cable operator, direct TV, or the Dish Network today. We got four hot teams as well. Hakeem Ward now playing lights out. Been dominant the last three games, and Connecticut looks like it's hitting stride with that young team. Some feel, depending on what some of the other teams ahead of UConn do in these conference tournaments, that maybe the Huskies can sneak into a number one seed. Uh, probably some losses middle of the year hurt them, but certainly you don't want to see them in your bracket if you're the one seed and they're a two or three seed. That, that's for sure. Donnell Taylor with his second foul. Miles will go to the line. Ellis Miles, senior from Compton, California. The season numbers. Well, and a great story, Ellis Miles. This is his fifth year. Remember, back in February 2003, he hurt his knee in the Marquette game at Freedom Hall. Missed all last season. Has bounced back strong. The amazing thing about this guy, he has shed 30 pounds since Rick Pitino took over, down to 9% body fat, and has become a Pitino favorite, kind of like Antoine Walker, a point center. Big offensive rebound for O'Bannon. Keeps it alive for Louisville. It's funny, Will. I can tell you how much he improved. I recruited him when I was at New Mexico, and I didn't like his attitude, and I didn't like the heavy body. And he has really made himself into a solid player. That's Miles with it, poked away. We'll stay with Louisville. I was at that game. I called that game at Freedom Hall when he went down with the ruptured tendon. The air went out of the building when it happened. Back after 30 and 8 all-time in conference tournaments, 6 and 2 here in Conference USA, and they won the title yep. a couple of years ago on their home coach. 602 games at Freedom Hall. Yep. You know this guy. Glenn Consor, that's right. That was Rick Pitino's first point guard right there at Boston University in 1978. And boy, has he told me some great stories about Rick Pitino. 
I went up to see Glenn in, in September of 78. They were doing their conditioning. I'm a sophomore in college, and I wanted to be a basketball coach. And I watched their condition. I snuck in. I said, who is this crazy man? And it was Rick Pitino. No kidding. Yep. Down low, Miles. What a feed from Jenkins. How's he changed? Well, he's definitely mellowed in terms of the intensity. He's certainly gotten smarter about the intensity, but back then he was a driven guy, and obviously the success followed him. Boston U and Providence, the Knicks, Kentucky. And there you see Ellis Miles off the great feed and the steal. And there's Glenn Consor. He'll do the game tomorrow for Westwood One on the radio. Along with Chuck Cooperstein. Yep. Who would have ever thought? 20, 25 years That's later. Right. Yep. 27 years later. That Rick would have made 10 NCAA tournament appearances. Been to the Final Four three times with Kentucky and yeah. won a national championship. See, uh, Glenn could write a book, but like in the you know the the Italian code that I have, <laughs> you don't you know you don't say anything that goes outside the family. Oh, I know all about it. But a great, great. Yeah, but a great coach, and has been coaching a long, long time, and they still looks pretty good on the sideline in those suits. See now a little bit of a one-one-three zone, just to change the pace of the game. Jenkins has it poked away by Broom. And Dean knocks it away. On the floor, Broom, Dean, fight for it. Jump ball. Stays with Louisville. Well, and as much as we talk about the UAB pressure, remember, Louisville can certainly turn up the heat of their own. You see Broom pokes it loose, but then the sloppy pass. Dean shoots the gap. And we have what we'll see a lot today, an all-out scrum on the floor. Bruno guy who hasn't seen much action. O'Bannon with six. Palacios, Miles, five rebounds apiece. Dean short on his three-point attempt, and Miles is called for the push in the back. His first. You know, one of the things that's going to be interesting as this game unfolds is UAB's ability to wear opponents down. We saw that yesterday with DePaul, where they led almost the entire game the Blue Demons, but Louisville's a little different because they take great pride in their conditioning. Room throws up the three and hits 39% from three-point range. He's not scared to shoot it. Well, he's sixth in the conference, Lou, and remember, he sprained that ankle in the Louisville game and was rendered really ineffective for much of the end of the season. Dean tries to get the three back, not that time. Not the rod. Palacios back up with it. And he's fouled. Well, Palacios has figured out, as we watch Broom now, an outstanding shooter. Knocks the shot down off the penetration. But Palacios has figured out that when a shot goes up, that's re it's really a pass to him. As the young man's got a cut. Yeah, I think he caught an elbow in the mouth. I think all good rebounders treat the shot, the missed shot, as a pass to themselves. You see Palacios comes up with a loose ball, and so now they can bring in Garcia to shoot the free throws. That's right. Garcia comes in. He's got to stay in the game at least until the clock starts. This is good coaching here by Rick Pitino. Garcia shoots 87%. And they can sub George for Garcia. Now, you have to get that now. Palacios can't come back until the clock starts, but if Garcia makes the second free throw here, George can sub for Garcia. And the reason why Rick will want to remove Garcia, right. for those of you just tuning in, is Garcia's been saddled with three fouls here in the first half. He's got to hope that he makes this one, or and he will, so he'll come out. Okay, good understanding of the rule right there. So Garcia replaces Palacios, knocks down the two free throws, and George now should be allowed. Now, you see, now, I'm a little surprised here because I think he can be in the game, but Rick Hartzell is going to know better than me. See, now they're going to talk about this. I think according to the rule, the seventh player can come in for the sixth. Palacio went out. Garcia should be allowed to come in the game and then leave. The only thing that can happen is Palacios can't come back into the game until the clock starts. 
Let's see how this is adjudicated because Hal Rusk is having that same conversation right now with Rick Hartzell. And that's the rule. Good you job right there. Nice job, Coach. Well, that's why you read the rule book. I know the rule book better now than I did when I was coaching. <laughs> but that is good coaching right there. Well, he's also fortunate, and usually you don't like to see Garcia on the bench, but that worked in Louisville's favor. Absolutely, and if Garcia had missed, then he would have had to stay in the game. So Patino took a calculated risk, and I was worried for a second because I thought I didn't know the rule, but Hal Musk got it right. And Rick Patino gets the two free throws with the 87% foul shooting. Johnson over to McDonald. Very good three-point shooter inside the line. Free throw line now. Jenkins lost it, goes out of bounds, and it will go to Louisville. Lewis thought it was off the Cardinal. He watched it roll out of bounds. Obviously does not agree with the call. Well, didn't get a chance to see it from our angle, but it's watch right here. Yep, right off of Bruno, it looked like to me. Right off his heel. Yep, good officiating right there. They get it right most of the time. They actually get better each year I stay away from coaching. I was going to ask you if yeah. you felt that way while you were on the sidelines. Oh, no, no. They're, they're much better than I ever thought. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm supposed to say. But they really do a great job throughout the year. Very difficult job, that's for sure. Dean. In defending. Shot clock down to two. O'Bannon throws it up. Way short at the force of shot. McDonald to Squeaky Johnson. Has it blocked. He knew the bodies were coming, and he drew the foul. Friday, ESPN 2's coverage of Championship Week continues with two more ACC tournament quarterfinal games. First at 7 o'clock Eastern, North Carolina State faces Wake Forest. Then at 9 o'clock Eastern, Virginia takes on Duke. The ACC tournament also available in high def on ESPN 2 HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the DISH network today. He's on the bubble amongst yeah, those teams we really, just talked in, about. In the ACC, I mean, there's, they got more bubbles than a, than a health spa. <laughs> I mean, really, I, I, I can't figure out. What's going to happen in the, on Sunday night is there are some teams that are going to back their way into the tournament. Maryland could be one of them with the three losses to Clemson. How about North, the way North Carolina, Carolina survived yeah. against Clemson great, today? Great effort by Clemson today. Oliver Purnell had his team ready. Here it's 2019, Louisville in front of UAB. It's been a back and forth affair, five lead changes already. Dean pulls up and hits the two. Well, good job by Taekwon Dean. Shot fake, got the defender in the air, then he got into that mid range and he knocked down the shot. First two points for Dean, he averages 14. See, Louisville will use this zone defense as a primary defense because they're athletic and long. Johnson split the gut of the defense and then had the open shot. Didn't fall, and the foul is committed by UAB. This is good skill development right here. Watch the shot fake. When you know you got to get out on a three-point shooter, you fly at him, and that's what the defender did, and Dean got into that mid-range and knocked down the 14-footer instead of the 19-footer. Second foul on Lewis will shoot some free throws. One Dean, junior, out of Red Bank, New Jersey. 83% from the line. Oh. Misses. He has just two. Well, remember, this Louisville group will play a lot of minutes today, fatigued because of that pressure. Ron L. Taylor threw one up, wouldn't fall, followed his miss. He'll go to the line. This is not a big Blazer team. They get out rebounded by four a game, but very active on the glass. Second foul on Palacios. Coach Patino, he didn't agree with the call. Wants it explained. And Ron L. Taylor. What do you think he was saying? Well, he's posturing for the second half of the game. You know, you got to work him in the first half. Good, good coaches will work the officials. Now, officials won't like me saying that, but they work them and just got to be friendly to them sometimes. You got to get on them a little bit. You got to let them know you're paying attention to their calls. 
But I'll tell you, a big lift right now is Ronnell Taylor being back in the lineup after missing those seven games. Even psychologically, to have him back in this group because, uh, number one, he's playing with his brother again, but also because Mike Anderson loves to have that athleticism in the mix. Broke his foot February 5th against Louisville. He talked about how it had been a while since they played without each other. That's strange. You know, it's like uh, it's like having two gloves and then having uh, going outside with only one glove on. O'Bannon makes a move to the bucket. What a layup! Boy, that was pretty. Well, you got a guy that shoots the ball that well from three. Teams are going to fly at him, and that's going to open up the driving lane. A good example right there. Delaney, everyone fought in the arena that it should have been a walking call. Instead, he comes up with two points. Well, that's a good-looking freshman. He was Atlantic Journal-Constitution top ten players in Georgia last year. And you know how many players who come out of Georgia. That's a pretty good honor. Miles kicked around. Wade, and he hits the three. Lorenzo Wade. Well, and then even though Miles lost control of the ball, he brought the ball up against pressure. And then the exciting freshman Wade only gets about 10 minutes a game, knocked down the three. Taylor's shot wouldn't fall. Knocked out of bounds, it will go to Louisville. Timeout on the floor. Cardinals. Blazers going at it. Oh, Bannon. And the cards up by four. Team for sure, DePaul as well. I think the problem is, I think Texas is in, but boy, the loss yesterday to Colorado is gonna make them probably not sleep the next couple nights and you know I think Doug's point the point I want to make Lou is there's like 25 teams that really you know are going to be in the mix for maybe five spots on that bubble a lot of parity and teams will back their way in UAB with 21 wins yep. 21 and 9 going into this game but last yep. year they made their 11th trip to the NCAA tournament yep. and what a memorable one well, it was no question wins over Washington and Kentucky but you know they only have one top 50 win right now Jenkins hits the floater. Well, we talked about the young man from Detroit. I watched him a year ago. You can see the improvement and the skill level. You see how in that zone, they know Squeaky Johnson doesn't like to shoot the ball, so both O'Bannon and Jenkins are really playing off of him. I know Taylor has it poked away. What is George showing quick hands? You know, and that could be some of the rustiness of missing those seven plus games because even yesterday he only played, I think, what, two minutes? Two minutes, you call it. George down low, Miles working on Richard Jones. Finds Jenkins, who takes the three. Short. Miles knocks it around, but it ends up in the hands of Delaney. Now back to man-to-man, -to -man, so Rick Pitino will mix those defenses. Sometimes you go man on a on a miss and zone on a make. Coaches like to change up depending on what you've done on the offensive possession. Ronald Taylor, shot clock is now at 10. Jones over to Squeaky Johnson. Tries to make something happen. Got caught up in the air. Wade comes away with it. See, that's good defense because Louisville knows that Squeaky Johnson, that's the last option he wants is to have to shoot the basketball. They played off of him and played the pass. Ball is on. See, one of the Jones. dangers of being a pass-first point guard is you can back off of him. You saw even Jenkins running away from him. And so instead of helping on the ball, you run to the shooters and you force him to have to play one-on-one -on -one and shoot the ball over a bigger guy. He does such a good job breaking down a defense That's when right. he takes it to the bucket. Should he have more of a scorer's mentality when he makes his way well, Let me flip it on you. When you play a guy like him, you, when he gets into the lane, you want him to be a shooter because at his size, he's not going to finish as well as he is going to drop the dime to people. So you bluff at him from the help and force him to shoot the ball and an unselfish point guard doesn't like to put a lot of shots up. Broom comes back, Jones takes a seat. Seven point lead for the Cards. You know, the advantage Rick Pitino has when you think about it, Lou, it's not just the 600 games that he coached in college, it's the NBA experience and having to guard the best players in the world every night 
and the advantage that he's brought to Louisville because of those experiences. And because of those experiences, I'm sure he gets the air of his players a lot easier Absolutely. than some other guys. Doesn't hurt in recruiting either. And he's got a monster class coming in next year. McDonald throws up the three, five feet behind the line. Well, Marvette McDonald really shoots the three about six, eight, 37%. That ended a 7-0 Louisville run back the other way. Miles to George to perfection. Well, there's the example of having a big guy that can handle the ball in the open court. Miles coming off a 10 assist yesterday. No one picked up room. He said, why not? Well, they're used to, at the top of the zone, to having Johnson up there. They've been backing off Johnson. You wonder if they fell asleep a little bit. O'Bannon and Jenkins and gave Broom the room. Under a minute to go here in the first half. McDonald defending O'Bannon. Miles double team. Needs help. O'Bannon open three. And now Johnson will pull it out. Five second difference between the shot clock and game clock. That's right. But UAB, it'll help them if they hold the ball as long as they can and try to give Louisville back the ball with as few seconds on the clock as possible. I mentioned earlier, even though UAB is a helter skelter defensive team, very patient offensively. Shot clock down to six. Marvette McDonald trying to get around O'Bannon, gives it up. Five seconds left. Delaney gets it back. Goes to the bucket and draws the foul. Louisville blows an opportunity, gives it back to the Blazers, and now Delaney will go to the line. Well, O'Bannon did a great job of keeping Mc McDonald and the street ball moves in front of him, but then they throw the ball away. You see Miles starts to run up the court before he gets it, and a very lucky break for Mike Anderson's Blazers. Paul Delaney, the freshman. This is the first. 60% from the line this season. Richard Jones comes back for Broom. You know, Delaney's got a lot of spin on that ball. And so when it does hit the rim, it's going to skip off more often than not if it doesn't go in cleaner. Watch the rotation of his shot now. 2.9 seconds left in the first half. Misses both. And there is McDonald to finish up. Right don't, place, right time. Don't want to be in that Louisville locker room the first five minutes of this halftime break. Wow. Louisville leads 33-31 over UAB. Just a breakdown off of the free throw. They don't get a body on the offensive player at a cheap basket. The game right now. Interestingly, UAB's high scorer, Derek Broom, six points, but they have made Louisville play ugly. Louisville's only shooting 42%. Broom with six points off the bench, thanks to a couple of threes. UAB will open with the basketball here in the second half. Well, Louisville opens in zone. They played this very aggressively. Eddins for two and hits. Demario Eddins. Well, he made two big threes at the end of that DePaul game yesterday. Former high school prep school teammate of Francisco Garcia, who, by the way, with those three fouls, is not on the court. No, still not out there. Got that third foul, 14-03 mark of the first half. Miles tied up for a moment. Dean open for three and hits. Taekwon Dean. Well, you talked about yesterday where Louisville missed their first 10 threes, but the way they play, they're going to keep shooting them. Very comfortable shooting the long range shot. They average almost 10 threes made a game. And that's why they're a good offensive rebounding team, because they know those misses are coming off. Up out of bounds by Louisville. First half numbers. Blazers shoot just 36% from the floor. Trail by only two, three-point shooting each club with four triples. I find that seven of 13 free throw percentage by Louisville interesting because UAB makes you play fatigued as the game goes on, and that will affect your free throw shooting. Shot clock is now down at seven. Squeaky Johnson 
immediately. Didn't even think about it. Stay a great change of pace right there. He knew the clock was going down. I've seen him do that in the past. There's a steal and another basket. Another basket for Evans, who has four quick points here in the second half. It's 38-36, UAB now in front. And we talked about the pressure of UAB being cumulative. As the game goes on, it usually becomes more effective. Miles runs over Lucas, his call for the offensive foul. That's three for Taekwon Dean. Well, this ties Dewan Wheat, 97 threes in his career. Three away from 100. Already over 1,000 points for the junior from Neptune, New Jersey. And what's amazing about that coach is that he suffered through mono for five That's games right. and didn't start, so his minutes were cut down. And remember, last year as a sophomore, he had that really serious groin injury for much of the year. Donnell Taylor pulls up, no. There's Dean for the rebound. And you see how Squeaky Johnson picks up full court even off the miss. Palacios. Dean again for three. And as good as Louisville has been, they really are only playing seven guys right now. Lewis throws one up, in and out. UAB goes 11 deep, so we'll, we'll be interested to see how the bench is a factor. Miles tried to get Lewis in the air, didn't work. But he does draw the foul from Lewis. And you get a good example of Larry O'Bannon's range. Hasn't hit as many today, two for six from three. It was interesting to listen to Coach Patino after yesterday's game when O'Bannon was scoreless in the first half right. but came up with 18 in the second half. Coach Patino said, now Larry knows how Garcia and Dean feel. He's no longer a secret out there. That's right. He ended the season with 24 at DePaul and then how about 33 against Charlotte last Thursday night, 26 in the first half. So you're right. He's going to get increased attention from his opponents. Lewis leads the game with three fouls. Little back for UAB. Tied at 38. Now he's tied the game. Little full court pressure now by Louisville. Rick Pitino may be electing to save it for the second half so that he didn't fatigue his team as much in the first half. I'll be interested to see how much they use that press. Garcia also on the floor playing with three fouls. McDonald around O'Bannon. He's fouled. You know, this young man, is, as you know, who is a great story. He lost his mom, Marvette McDonald, last Friday night. Came back to Memphis, called Coach Anderson on Saturday morning. The team was in Houston. He said, Coach, I want to come down there. He comes down to Houston. He gets to Houston. He tells Coach Anderson, I want to play in the game. Mike Anderson said it was very emotional, and then the young man went out. 13 points, the last seven as they knocked off Houston, 71-66. So you know this young man right now, a week removed from losing his mom, is playing with a heavy heart. You better believe it. Sometimes being on the court is almost an escape for you. Really. A couple of national championships when he was at Southeastern Junior College. A great program up in Iowa. He's a winner, played, played for winners. Louisville throws it away. 13th turnover for the Cards. Garcia has got to be careful now because he wants to get aggressive, but he can't be overly aggressive with the three fouls. Hey, if I were Mike Anderson, I might try to do something to go right at Garcia with Taylor, see if we can get a fourth one on him. Little back to the bucket, back to Squeaky, up top, Taylor. McDonald working on Wade. I am now throws up the fadeaway and hits. That was pretty. Well, he's back home. This is his hometown. UAB has a tradition going back to the great Gene Bartow of Memphis being a great recruiting base. Back to 1979 when they built the program here. Adams has Wade Trapp. Five-second violation on Louisville. Mike Anderson loves it. Now Rick Pitino is out of the coaching box right now. 
Early in the year, that probably would have been a T, or as Bobby Roots said at the press conference, if it was Bobby Roots, it might be a T. Well, you saw Coach Lutz last <laughs> night working over the refs after Coach Calipari and the Charlotte lost to Memphis made his way to midcourt. McDonald's three wouldn't fall, Dean the other way. Bobby Roots implying that he's not a big name. That's a mistake. Because he is. He is yeah, truly he is. one of the better coaches in college basketball. It's a short man. Taylor all the way. Well, I to like the finish. That. I'd love to see Taylor get going against Garcia with the three fouls. 44-38. UAB. Six-point advantage. Marvette McDonald, Donnell Taylor putting the Blazers in front. The Cardinals 44 38. Nolan Richardson in the crowd watching Mike Anderson, who spent 21 years with him. That's right. Played for Nolan Richardson at Tulsa. 17 years as an assistant coach. Right next to Mike Anderson is Scott Edgar. <clears throat> also worked for Nolan Richardson for quite a while. Great tandem. It's amazing. Mike Anderson, it took forever for him to become a head coach. Here's Scott Edgar has done a great job as well, a former head coach at Murray State. You know, Tulsa has a coaching opening right now. There have been a number of times where Mike Anderson would have been a great candidate there. Probably can't get him now. But boy, Mike Anderson's done a great job. And you know the other thing, Louis, he's, he's a great guy. Turnover numbers. Louisville already with 14. That's at their season average. And we talk about that pressure being cumulative now. Palacios. Louisville with another chance. You were talking about Anderson and the Tulsa job. He's from Birmingham. I heard his name floated around for another job in the SEC, possibly. Does he stay at UAB? He does for now because they love him at Alabama, Birmingham. 44 38, Blazers lead. On the season finale of Tilt. Ready to lose? They were. In this game so far, UAB leads by six, 44 38. Blazers on a 6 0 run. Well, both teams are teams of runs. Louisville has had 54 runs of 8 0 or more this year, Lou. So it'll be interesting to see if Louisville can create some momentum of their own. But UAB is in a nice job of making this game ugly. McDonald walked with it. Let's look at our direct TV game track so far. Well, interesting, nobody on either team is in double figures. Marvette McDonald leads UAB with nine. And you see Francisco Garcia, those three early fouls, has really hamstrung the Cardinal offense today. What would you tell him to get his game on track? Well, you know, in, in, Patino's, in Rick Patino's system, you get your offensive game on track usually off of the defense. But in his case, he's got to be careful because he can't be overly aggressive. Way to the bucket. Miles tracked down the pass and then found Wade following the play. Well, we saw the great athleticism of the freshman yesterday with a highlight missed dunk and that time the finish. Yesterday, he was at the top of the square on the miss. There's an example of Louisville scoring off that defense. Johnson down low, tried to get it to Little. Squeaky comes up with it again, throws it up. No. Miles pulls down the rebound. You see, Squeaky's not going to finish a lot inside, so when he has the ball that close, make him shoot it. Another great feed to Wade. Doesn't convert that time. Louisville faithful wanted a travel call, and instead, Taylor knocks down the three. Well, Donnell Taylor, athletic, really multi-dimensional. There's a lot of those guys in this league. Garcia gives it up. Here come the Blazers. Four on two. Delaney this time. And you see, Lou, the mayhem that UAB can cause off the pressure defense. 49-40. 16 turnovers for the Cardinals. Well, the Cardinals play this way every single day of the year in practice. Excuse me, the Blazers. 
And Louisville presses in their own right, but not the way UAB does. They spend every part of practice playing in the full court. And so this is very common to them. Most teams, it's not natural to be in this kind of helter-skelter game, but it's exactly what the Blazers want. They call it the fastest 40 minutes in basketball, Coach. Points off turnovers so far. Well, it's usually Louisville with the advantage on that statistic, but UAB gets 25 points a game over the course of the season off of their pressure. And Nolan Richardson, Nolan Richardson has seen a little bit of this defense in his career. Talked to Scott Edgar yesterday, the assistant head coach. They start the beginning of the season going three minutes, full court, all out craziness. They build it to four, five, and then six, seven minutes at a time in practice. And a TV timeout comes in four minutes, so you know they're practicing that overload. O'Bannon, nice feed to Miles, who lays it up and in. Global needed those quick two points. Well, they take you out of your offense, so what you've got to do is you've got to make athletic plays. Good example right there by the Cardinals. Is there a better conditioned team in college basketball than UAB? Well, there probably are some, but these guys play this way all the time. Delaney's shot wouldn't fall. You talked about it earlier. He'll go 11 guys deep on that bench. Absolutely. You got the, the you got 11 guys playing about 10 minutes or more a game. Oh, what a feed. No look pass from Miles to Palacios. Shot wouldn't fall, but he'll go to the line. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues tonight on ESPN. Both semifinal games from the Big East Championship. First at 7 Eastern, West Virginia takes on number 21 Villanova. Then at 9 Eastern, it's 18th ranked Syracuse against number 14 UConn. The Big East Championship presented by Aeropostale is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network today. You know, Lou, if you take the green jerseys off them and you put those Arkansas Razorback jerseys of the late 80s, early 90s, you wouldn't know the difference. You wouldn't know the difference. And you know who I saw floating around the arena the last couple of days? Todd Day. How about that? A Memphis native. Yep, Todd Day, Lee Mayberry. They mined Memphis well. And how ironic that Mike Anderson is back home in Birmingham now, mining a Memphis area that Gene Bartow made a living at. All-time leading scorer, Steve Mitchell, a Memphis product for the Blazers. Jerome Mincy wasn't bad either on those teams in the 80s. Both from Memphis. McDonald, double team. Green chasing him around. Delaney, the freshman. McDonald to Edens. Edens makes a move. Throws one up at the bucket. Garcia pulls it out of the air. Dean back the other way. Pulls up for three. And hits. Didn't even think about it. Knew exactly what he wanted to do with that ball. At the other end, Richard Jones was fouled going back to the bucket. Boy, in a hurry, UAB got it back. Off the score, they still get back, and they'll shoot two free throws. But that three-pointer by Dean, this is something they do every day in practice. It's one thing to spot shoot three-pointers, but you have to be able to shoot them off the move. And this is something that goes back to the Providence days with Rick Pitino and all of that skill development and practice. UAB leads Louisville 49-46. First game of the semifinal round of the Men's Conference USA Basketball Tournament brought to you by Kelly Tires from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Lou Canellis. The coach, Fran Fraschill, is alongside. Three-point numbers so far. Louisville, 6 for 17. UAB, 7 for 13. When I talked to Scott Edgar about the three-point shooting. They said, when we make shots, it makes our defense that much better. Yesterday, they didn't make many, but they made two that counted when Edens knocked those threes down. But they, they, it was a grinded-out game yesterday. When they're making their threes, they're super lethal. And it tells you a little bit about the toughness of that team. To struggle like they did yep. from the floor against the ball, but still keep their composure down the stretch. They didn't take the lead over the Blue Demons. Until yeah. that three from Edens with 127 right. left. Absolutely. Dean for three, not that time. And this kind of ragged pace is right up UAB's alley. Oh, 
McDonald decides to take it. No, almost tapped in by Little. Knocked out of bounds. Today, along the same lines, a big guy that can handle the ball, always comes in handy against a team like UAB that puts that pressure on you. We talked about how he ruptured his tendon at the end of the 2003 season. Actually fractured his left thumb against East Carolina this year. Garcia throws up the three and hits. And remember, that started, Lou, because of Miles' ability to handle the ball in the open court. He found George. The Georgia role player found the star, Garcia. Garcia's been struggling with three fouls. McDonald's shot wouldn't fall. Couple of tries for UAB. Loose on the floor, goes out of bounds. We'll stay with the Blazers. Well, an important miss right there as Ernest Lewis didn't get the finish. You know, we talk about the conditioning. We talk about the conditioning of UAB, but remember Louisville the same way. Here's the kick out. And the three by Garcia, that may get him going. Young man who's been in foul trouble, but Rick Patino going back to Kentucky, he util utilizes treadmills in practice. So if you make a mistake or an egregious mistake, you go right to the treadmill, keeps you in condition, but also doesn't put the wear and tear on your body of doing those line drills on the hard court. These Louisville guys are in super basketball condition. For Garcia, that was his first field goal in the game. Eddins gets the three back. Now the two prep school teammates, Winchett in school, up in Winchett in Massachusetts, Garcia and Eddins back to back threes. Great program. Mike Burns up there does a great job, and he saw his two of his pupils right there in the last 30 seconds. Eddins gives Coach Anderson about 12 and a half points a game. That was a huge three. Remember, Eddins committed to Arkansas when Nolan Richard, Richardson was there. Miles down low. Nothing Taylor could do about that. When Nolan Richardson left Arkansas, Mike Anderson left, went to UAB, and Demario Eddins joined the party. That's Eddins on the baseline, throws one up with the right hand. He's fouled by Dean. Friday, ESPN 2's cover. There's a number of different national players of the year. You wonder if some of the voters are going to take out that low blow against Julius Hodge on him. You know he's a good kid, made a mistake, and penalized fairly. Ball goes out of bounds. We'll stay with Louisville. Eddins is Eddins is complaining. Hart, so I didn't touch it. No, but I'll tell you, Squeaky Johnson is telling Hart, so you got it right. Squeaky's trying to, let's see here. Well, no, Squeaky's wrong. Looks like should be Louisville's UAB's ball. And Squeaky was just playing to the official. Like he used to do as a coach. Absolutely. Right? Making him feel good. Miles to the bucket. Whoa, threw one up with the reverse layup. Almost fell, and he'll go to the line. A lot of it can be the fatigue we've talked about. This this press is cumulative. It takes its toll over the course of the game, and it may be no small coincidence that they're struggling from the line right now. They're now 10 for 19. And also, Miles is not a good foul shooter. Taylor, shot clock down the nine. Over to Squeaky Johnson. Throws up the floater, no. George pulls it down, went in and out. Well, the one concern right now if you're Mike Anderson is you've got to still score some points because Louisville can hit a couple threes and really get on a roll. It's a team of runs. That's Garcia. And the shot clock is down to 10 now for Louisville. And Garcia pulls up for three long that time. over the floor needs help makes a move oh had the open shot instead tried to pass the ball out in court it's the basketball committee this is a good basketball team 21 wins 
Wins to Taylor. How about this last year of Conference USA? Already nine teams with 18 wins. A great year in the history of the conference. George almost pulled it out of midair. Good defense again. Anytime Squeaky Johnson has to shoot those floaters near the basket, that is good for Louisville because he thinks pass first. Really doesn't want to shoot the ball. UAB now in that zone. It's a 2-3 zone out of a 1-1-3 set. Garcia hits that three. He has two here in the second half. Well, Louisville has struggled to score, but now they've tied it. Pit tie of the game. Lewis, Dean, fighting for it underneath. Jump ball, possession goes to Louisville. He being in great condition, but so is this Louisville team. There you see the UAB resume. One thing not on there is that they are 8-5 and five against the top 100. And that's something I would go, and I think they got a win yesterday, so it's one and four versus the top 50, but eight and five versus the top 100. Have won four in a row and two over DePaul. What about a weak non-conference schedule? Part of that will be factored in, but this conference has been pretty good. Remember, one of the things about Conference USA, Lou, is that they play an unbalanced schedule, so Louisville doesn't see Memphis, Louisville, and Cincinnati three, th twice each. Always on Eddins, his first. Another interesting thing about UAB, 10 road wins this year. 10 and 6 on the road. Not saying they're definitely in, but they're obviously one of those teams that will go down to the wire on Sunday. And they've gotten hot here at the end of the season. Five-game winning streak came after a four-game losing streak. Garcia's three wouldn't fall. Ellis with the rebound, and Garcia with another try. Not that time. Fights hard down low. That time he finishes up. Well, just great stick to itiveness by Garcia. Got into the lane, missed the shot as Louisville gets that first lead of the game. First lead since early in the second yep. half. The Louisville faithful on their feet here. They travel well. Shot clock under 10, down to seven. Eddins thought about the three. He'll have to do something. And he was bailed out by oh, Jenkins. He sure was. Louisville with 16 fouls, UAB four. There's the advantage of having Miles handle the ball so well. by Squeaky. Now Miles puts it on the floor. On George for a moment. Dean takes the three. Long. O'Bannon got tangled up with Lewis. Ball goes out of bounds. It will stay with Louisville. And a fresh shot clock. Good effort on the offensive glass. Watch the wrestling match on the other side there. Just a good hustle play. Really not a foul. Dean again for three. And that time he converts. No hesitation. As soon as he released the shot, with great rotation, by the way, he started backing up because he's made a few of those in his career. Three so far in this game. He has 11 points. Big stretch for UAB because they've struggled to score in the last few minutes. Not that time for Eddins. Handled this pace well, even with the shorter bench. Dean against McDonald. Makes his move. Finds Garcia. He was alone for a moment. Good job by Taylor getting over there. Missed the jumper. Miles down low. Had the loose ball. Six point advantage. See, and this is not a passive Louisville zone. Watch how they get out and pressure the ball. You've got to know where Bloom and Taylor are. 
There's Taylor breaking to the bucket, had it rejected by Garcia. And Ned Pulled it right out of the hands of O'Bannon. Goes up with it. No. And Dean pulls it down. And that was a bad break as Delaney had the point blank look off the steal. Miles calls for double dribble. Squeaky Johnson creating. Double dribble. Despite the turnover, they've done a great job of protecting the basketball here in the second, the second half. half. Just their second turnover here in the second half. Yep. They've got accustomed to the UAB pressure. Very similar game as the game they played in Birmingham earlier in the season. Game one by the Cardinals. The Eagles use that strip zone to stretch the Groom to the hoop. Yep. Throws up the floater and it falls. There at Groom. That field goal and a couple of threes so far off the bench. Knocked out of bounds, went off for Garcia last. We'll go back to UAB. Well, off the basket, they set the press up, and Donnell Taylor with the long arms. This is good recognition by Broom here. They stretch the defense out on him because they know he shoots it, so he's able to get into the crease off the dribble and knock down the short runner. If you're a guy that can really shoot the ball, it helps your shooting. The ability to get shots if you can make the mid-range game. Lewis down low. Who came up with it? Taylor did. And he threw it up and in. Well, this is typical UAB right now in another one. And off the hands of O'Bannon. Again, the Blazers force a turnover. And Rick Patino wants a timeout. As we said, the Cardinals just used their last possession arrow in favor of UAB. Taylor. Fouled by Jenkins. Time out on the floor, 3.54 left. Tied at 61, sixth tie of the game. Second lead changes as well. Look at Squeaky. Came from behind Miles. Miles didn't know he was coming, he poked it away. And it's a great job done by Mike Anderson after losing a guy like Morris Finley a year ago. Sydney Ball. He'll be back in this position fighting for a tournament there. Fifth all-time score, Finley was. Garcia, pretty good score himself. Hits another three. How about the junior from the Bronx stepping up big in the second half? He is unselfish, but you also have to know when to take over a game if you're going to be a team star. And Taylor gives it up. 64-61. Just a 10 turnover for UAB. And Francisco Garcia, we just talked about being multidimensional. And that time, Donnell Taylor not recognizing that Garcia pulls the trigger from the NBA line. Palacios over the line. Finds Dean for three. Short that time. Loose on the floor. Here comes Taylor. And it's poked away by Dean out of bounds. Well, the same thing we talked about that right there. There's two white shirts in front of Taylor. That means he's got to be conscious of the fact that there's three coming from behind. And one of the things a good pressing team does is tip that ball from behind. Even though that wasn't a pressing situation, good heads up play by the Louisville player to poke it free. Room. Over to Taylor. Taylor needs room. Finds McDonald. Garcia all over. McDonald makes the move to the bucket. Ball on the floor. It's free throws. Palacios over the line. Dean looking over the floor. As we approach the two minute mark. Oh boy. Here comes Miles to the bucket. Tried to dish it off to Garcia. Gives it up. McDonald on the run. Throws it up. Misses the layup. Taylor had a crack at it. Palacios back the other way. And a huge break for Louisville as the Blazers at point blank range can't finish. Everything went well there. The steal, the break. Lewis chasing around Dean. Lewis had four fouls. Now he has five. He's fouled out.
championship game. It's all about seeding. All about seeding. It would be 28-4 right and four with yep. a victory here. Two wins over non-D1s, but still 26 solid wins. Taylor lost it for a moment. Although some people think they won the Ohio Valley Conference this year in that non-conference schedule. Still played in Maui. Taylor for three, throws it up. No. McDonald bats at it. Dean comes out with it. Still don't think you have to foul if you're the Blazers. Two possession game. Garcia loses it. Trying to go through the lane, but Dean was there. Just look for double teams now. Here comes Jenkins. Over to Miles. Miles to the bucket, and he's fouled. The foul's on Little. Key, call your cable operator, direct TV, or... Coaching college and NBA players. Kevin Willard, Ralph Willard's son, is going to be a solid head coach someday. It's a great coaching staff. Miles now with 13 Eddins for the bucket. UAV another opportunity. Under a minute to go. Seven point lead for the cards. Taylor for three. No, and Jenkins grabs the rebound, and he's fouled. Dean came down with the miss, but he was tied up, so UOB will get the basketball. I asked Reggie Fias to look a little bit more fatigued, and he said that he thought Coach Patino really did a nice job of managing the injuries on this year's squad. Guys that are hurt don't get as worn down once they do get back. Wade will inbound the basketball. Ooh, gets it to O'Bannon. Now, the inbounder, Wade, cannot run the baseline. He's got to stay stationary. Gets it in to Dean. Bannon over the line. To Wade. Now you have to foul. You've got to stop the clock. Louisville doing a nice job. And now Wade is... Two. Almost have to shoot a three here if you can get it. McDonald, best three-point shooter on the team. Short that time. Dean comes. Um, but this is a team that knows how to win. A lot of firepower. And obviously a coach that is a little bit tournament tested. Johnson, the clock winds down and out. Count it, a three. Not enough. 74-67. Rick Pitino and the Louisville Cardinals hold on to defeat UAB. 74 again, 67. Coming up next, stay tuned for Sports Center, 7 o'clock Eastern, the Big East Championship semifinal presented by Aero Postel between West Virginia and Villanova. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in...